Hey kids! I'm so excited to share with you another book today. This book is called This Is How We Do It and it's by Matt Lamothe. You can check this book out at your local library if you're interested in reading it on your own, but we're going to read it together and see how kids from different parts of the world live, dress, go to school, eat, just like you and me. Behind me, you'll see a drawing of the world. So as we're reading through the book together, you can take a look at the map behind me and think about where these countries are. Let's get started. This is how we do it. One day in the lives of seven kids from around the world. You can see on the cover some of the kids and the activities that they do in different parts of the world. Maybe you know someone who's from another country and who lives here in the United States. Maybe they look like this or dress like this. Or maybe you and your family are from another country. Let's see what's inside. Wow, it opens up with a big map of the world and pictures of all the kids and where they come from. So here we can see the author of this book, Matt, is from Chicago. One of the kids is from Los Naranjos in Peru. His name is Roblado. Another kid is named Oleg and he lives in Uchali, Russia. Yet another kid is named Hardivar and she lives in India. Let's take a look at their lives. This is How We Do It by Matt Lamoth. Here are the seven kids. This is me. My name is Ribaldo, and I'm called Pirinio. I'm 11 years old. My name is Ananya, and I'm called Anu. I'm eight years old. I live in India. My name is Kayan. I'm seven years old. I live in Iran. My name is Romeo. I'm called Mio. I'm eight years old, and I live in Italy. My name is Kai, and I'm called Kai-chan. I'm nine years old, and I live in Japan. My name is Daphne, and I'm called Abuli. I'm seven years old, and I live in Uganda. My name is Oleg, and I'm called Olezka. I'm eight years old, and I live in Russia. This is where I live. In Russia, I live in a second-floor apartment in Uchali, a mining town near the Ural Mountains. In Peru, I live in a house my father built in Los Naranjos, a village in the Amazon rainforest. In Japan, I live in a house in the metropolitan of Tokyo, one of the largest cities of the world. In Uganda, I live in a house made of wood and mud in the village of Kanawara. In Italy, I live in a house in the village of Corinano, with a vineyard in my backyard. In Iran, I live in a second-floor apartment in the city of Gorgon, close to the Caspian Sea. And in India, I live in a first-floor apartment in the northern city of Hardivar, along the fast-flowing Ganges River. This is who I live with. In Iran, I live with my mom, Masha, my dad, Mohammed, and my brother, Aaron. In India, I live with my mom, Shivi, my dad, Mohit, and my younger sister, Anika. In Japan, I live with my mom, Yuki, my dad, Dai, and my younger sister, Nail. In Italy, I live with my mom, Frances Francesca, my dad, Oscar, and my big brother, Hugo, and my older sister, Mila. In Peru, I live with my mom, Sophia, my dad, Isaias, my younger brothers, Nicer and Eber, and my little sister, Naida. I also have four older siblings who don't live with us. In Uganda, I live with my mom, Beatrice, my dad, Peter, and my older brother, Roger. In Russia, I live with my mom, Katya, my dad, Albert, and my younger brother, Artem. This is what I wear to school. 
In Japan, I choose my own clothes for school. I like striped dresses and fancy socks. In Iran, I wear a uniform that has a jacket with a built-in shirt collar. In Italy, I wear different clothes every day, but my favorite is the dinosaur sweater. In Peru, we don't have a uniform. I usually wear trousers, a t-shirt, and a belt with a lion buckle. In India, my uniform includes a special ID, and I wear it like a necklace. In Russia, boys are required to wear a black suit, white shirt, and tie, but I get to pick out the socks. In Uganda, we all dress in red t-shirts and green shorts for school. This is what I eat for breakfast. In Iran, I have barbari bread, eggs, feta cheese, walnuts, and tea with sugar. In Peru, I have fried rice with chicken and peppers, sliced boiled plantains, and hot milk. In Uganda, I have matoki with meat, bread, eggs, and milk. In Italy, I have toast with Nutella spread, a cup of egg yolks mixed with sugar and milk, and tea. In Russia, I have oat kasha with milk and butter, farmer cheese, bread, and apple juice. In India, I have paneer paratha with tomato chutney and milk. In Japan, I have rice with virakaki, miso soup, grilled cod, and an orange wedge. This is how we learn. In India, we study general awareness and value education, as well as subjects like math, Hindi, and English. In Japan, we all wear white indoor slippers and are in charge of cleaning our classroom every day. We study ethics, as well as math, science, and Japanese. In Peru, our school is very small, so the 14 kids in the 5th and 6th grades study in the same room. We have different subjects each day, and our school ends at 1 o'clock. In Russia, I study three languages, Russian, English, and Bashkir. I'm in a class with the same kids and the same teacher from 1st through 4th grades. In Uganda, I study at a private school, far from home, so I stay with my grandma, who has a house nearby. There are 69 boys and girls in my class, and we study math, reading, writing, and religion. In Iran, I go to an all-boys school. We study reading and writing in Farsi, math, science, and the Quran. In Italy, we do many activities outside the classroom, like visit parks and forests, go to museums in other cities, and put on a musical at the end of the year. We have school from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock. This is how I spell my name. In Russia, I write in Russian using the Cyrillic alphabet. In Peru, I write in Spanish using the Latin alphabet. In Iran, I write in Farsi using the Persian alphabet. In Japan, I write in Japanese using kanji characters. In Uganda, I write in Ruturo and English using the Latin alphabet. In India, I write in Hindi using the Devanagari alphabet. In Italy, I write in Italian using the Latin alphabet. This is how I play. In Uganda, I like to jump rope with my friends from school. In Italy, I have rock throwing contests in the hills behind my house. In Russia, I play hockey with my team almost every day after school. In India, I gather with all my friends in the park to play Rumal Kor, or Hanky Thief. In Japan, I play Kori Oni, or Freeze Tag, with friends in the, on the playground by my house. In Iran, I go horse, horseback riding with my friends at a nearby stable. In Peru, I play soccer with my two brothers and nephew on a field by the main road. This is how I help. In Uganda, I sweep the courtyard with a broom. In India, I hang wet laundry on the clothesline to dry. In Italy, I feed our four cats and some wild ones that come to the backyard. In Peru, I help tend the cornfields in our family farm. In Russia, I vacuum the floors and rugs. In Iran, I help take care of my little brother. In Japan, 
I help cook dinner. This is how we eat dinner. In Iran, on weekends, we all have dinner together, but on weekdays, it's just my mom, little brother, and me. We eat in the kitchen around 9 o'clock, a dinner of grilled chicken, salad with tomato and cucumbers, yogurt, and bread with water to drink. In Russia, we all eat together in the kitchen around 6 o'clock, a meal of salad, mashed potatoes, kotleti with cheese sauce, my favorite, and bread for dessert. My mom serves oladi with condensed milk, cookies, and black tea. In Italy, sometimes during the week, my family eats separately, but we always eat together on the weekends. We gather at the kitchen table around 8 o'clock to eat lasagna with ragu balinese and bechamel sauce. We drink peach iced tea and water. In Uganda, my brother, mom, housemaid, and I usually eat dinner around 10 o'clock at night at our big wooden table. We have matoki with g-nut sauce and milk to drink. In Japan, I eat with my parents and little sister in the dining room around 7 o'clock. Our typical meal is fried salmon with tartar sauce, rice, salad with apples, cucumbers and tuna, tofu, miso soup, and milk or water to drink. In India, my whole family eats together around 9 o'clock in our dining room. We have chutney, carrots, and potatoes, chapati, and yogurt with water to drink. In Peru, my entire family gathers around 7 o'clock to eat a dinner of white rice, boiled yucca, and stewed chicken with coffee to drink. This is what I do in the evening. In Russia, I play chess with my dad. In India, my sisters and I play a board game called Karom. In Uganda, I relax with my family. In Iran, I watch cartoons on TV. In Peru, I help my brother with his homework. In Italy, I work on model cars with my dad. And in Japan, my mom and I read mystery books together. This is where I sleep. I sleep on wooden planks with three folded blankets for padding next to my sister in Peru. In Italy, I sleep in my own room on a wooden bed with a down blanket I use only during the winter. I sleep in my own room on a wooden bed with my favorite blanket in Iran. In Japan, I sleep on a futon on the floor next to my sister. In India, I sleep on a huge bed next to my sister and my parents. In Uganda, I sleep in a wooden bed under a mosquito net in a room I share with my parents. I sleep on a loft bed in a room I share with my younger brother in Russia. This is my night sky. What do you notice about the night sky? It has the moon. Is the moon different for the different people? Or is it the same? What do you think? The moon looks the same to me no matter where. And here are all the families. We just learned about all these different families and their kids. So you can see the real picture of all the kids here. And there's a little note about um, more specifically how they were involved in making the story. And at the very end, there's a list of all the new words that we learned. So maybe we heard some words like ferrakaki, a seasoning, or maybe a futon, or a karam, which is a game that you can play, or chapati, which is a type of bread. Maybe some of these words you didn't recognize, but in the back of the book, they have a definition for them all. And those are the lives of seven kids from around the world. I hope you enjoyed reading this with me, and I hope you get a chance to check it out at your local library so you can learn more. This was very fun. I look forward to our next story time together. Bye for now.